A lot of work goes into a rainbow trout egg take. Staff at the William Jack Hernandez Sportfish Hatchery in Anchorage raise and release fish year-round. Here's an in-depth look at a recent rainbow trout egg take. Yeah. My name is David Starzynski and I'm a fish biologist here at the William Jack Hernandez Sportfish Hatchery. Staff have gone and selected fish that can be used for the egg take. Each of those fish is then passed on to the spawner. And we're doing cut spawning for this egg take and he's going to be opening up the fish, making sure that we collect all the eggs that are inside the body cavity. We don't want to leave any of those behind. That bucket of eggs gets handed off to a second person and they're our quality control person and they're going through and they're making sure that there are no bad eggs or at least minimizing the number of bad eggs in each bucket uh, because we are combining multiple females into a bucket and then passing it along. Once a bucket of eggs is filled, then that bucket gets transferred to the enumeration station and we're verifying and counting how many eggs we have in that bucket and then that bucket gets passed on to the triploid side of the egg take and we continue on from there. Once that bucket of eggs makes it over to the triple A portion of the egg take, we have someone stationed to actually uh, fertilize those eggs. They're gonna take that bucket of eggs, they're gonna add the milk or the sperm from the male fish into that bucket and mix it up a little bit so that everything is uh, as uniform as possible. And then on a specific time, then we're gonna add some saline solution to the bucket and that's gonna activate those eggs and those sperm. And so if you don't have water added into that solution, nothing's gonna happen. Eggs have been fertilized, they've sat for a minute and a half, and then the next step is we need to have those eggs as clean as possible before they go into the egg incubators. And so that's where we have our rinser, and they're going to be just using clean hatchery water to flush out any remaining sperm or milk from the males or any other gunk that may have made it into the egg bucket, uh, including bad eggs as well. Uh, now that they're clean, they can be bagged up for the later processes that we have, and so those those eggs are going to get all poured into a bag and then secured with a rubber band. We keep track of each one by number because uh, during the triploid process we have a very specific time schedule that we are on and we need to know each individual bag of eggs and at what time they were fertilized so that we know what time the shock can occur. Then those eggs will travel into the incubation room and they will wait for some designated amount of time for those cellular division processes to happen um, so that we can then pressurize and shock those eggs at the correct time to induce triploidy in our rainbow trout population. So all of these eggs are destined to be triploid. What that essentially means is that they will have three sets of chromosomes rather than two. And so what we are doing is we are disrupting cellular division at a very specific spot and causing this cell, this egg, to retain a third set of chromosomes. And what that does is that effectively sterilizes the fish. These fish are destined to be stocked out in local area lakes, and we want to make sure that they are not interacting interacting with wild populations or reproducing on their own and so this is a tool that we have to prevent that in the future and kind of the whole reason that we're here doing this portion of the egg take, the whole triploid process. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Once the eggs have been pressurized and triploided then they will go into a disinfection bath for 10 minutes and that will kill off any sort of bacteria or fungal spores that are on the outside of the eggs and increase the the uh, survival of those eggs long term and so that's why we're doing that step. Uh, once they've been in that bath for 10 minutes and they've water hardened then all of those eggs get trayed down and basically poured out of the bag that they were in and then they'll be closed up in their individual tray and they will stay there for up to 30 days or something like that before they go into the next process which is picking out the dead eggs. Once this whole process has been finished then those eggs will hang out in those trays until they're ready to be ponded. They're ponded as fry into our shared tanks area. And then those fish, uh, some of them will get stocked out this summer as fingerling into some of the local lakes, but most of them will end up as catchables and 
they will go out the following spring to the local area lakes as 12 inch or so rainbow trout. The ultimate purpose of those fish is to create angling opportunities for the public in our local area lakes, especially in some of these lakes that get fished heavily that don't have time to grow a rainbow trout. That's the, the intention with those catchable fish. As you've seen here today, it takes a, a lot of folks and a lot of steps to create these fish for stocking opportunities, for fishing opportunities uh, in the local lakes. Anybody's out there and catches a rainbow trout in one of our stocked lakes know that all of these people were involved and all this effort was involved in these fish and we hope that you enjoy your end of the process as well. So.